inside your head. You really cannot catch them or find their whereabouts. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The disguise. Ugh, good. Tom Thomas, why do you need a second aquarium? Especially without any fish. First of all, it's a terrarium. And it's not for fish, it's for lizards and snakes. Ooh. My friend Katya asked me to take care of him while she's away. That's why I brought him here. Take care of who? There's no one in there. Ah! What is that? <laughs> it's a chameleon, Nolik. I think he's awesome. It's a bad idea to take him out. He might run away. Don't you worry. I got him. What a monster. But how come I couldn't see him before? It's because a chameleon knows how to disguise himself by changing the color of his whole body. <laughs> have you ever seen a military uniform? They have special patterns and colors that help soldiers hide. That's called camouflage, and people learned it from animals. For instance, a caterpillar can look like a twig, and a seahorse can look like a piece of coral. An ordinary gray rabbit becomes white in the winter, so a wolf will have trouble finding it in the snow. But the champion of camouflage is the chameleon. This master of disguise can change its color in just a matter of seconds. Hey, Tom Thomas, where'd your chameleon go? Oh, it disappeared. It didn't disappear, it camouflaged. He won't hide for long. Let's find him. <laughs> Chusaka, have you seen the chameleon? Where is he? Do you see him? into coming to us. Uh-huh. We can set a trap with something that he likes. What do they like, I wonder? What else? Their food. And what do chameleons eat? Well, like flies or caterpillars, roaches. Where's the fly going to come from? Well, what if... What? Oh, Simka, just you wait. I'm going to get you. Hey, we've got to help Katya. You don't see the caterpillar complaining. Quiet. Nolik, you start buzzing. Buzzing? Yeah, like a fly. Yeah, and flap your wings, too. Simka, how long do I gotta keep doing this? Until the chameleon shows himself. Just keep buzzing. all the time. They use nets that look like bushes, paint their tanks in colors that make them blend into their surroundings, and even fly in special planes that can't be seen by radar. They do everything they can to disguise their location. But it's not just the army that uses disguises. Photographers camouflage themselves to take pictures of wild animals. People use makeup to camouflage their blemishes. And artists, they disguise old walls with bright, happy pictures. And people just love to put on masquerade parties where they disguise themselves in costumes and masks. 
And of course, Fixies have their own great disguise. Remember? Well, what is it? Now he won't run away. So, Mr. Master of Disguise, what are you gonna say now? If only I could disguise myself that well. Nolan, what are you talking about? You know how to disguise yourself a hundred times better than him. Ah, oh, you're right. Hey, Chameleon, look and learn. Here's a real disguise. The Chain Reaction. Tom Thomas, what you doing? Nolik, leave me alone. No, really. What is that? Quit distracting me, will you? Nolik, look at what you've done. I? It's all because you wouldn't quit it. Wouldn't quit what? I was struggling with that thing for half an hour and you ruined it. Mm. Ugh. with fire, because just one match or little piece of smoldering coal can lead to a huge disaster. Yes, they can make a whole forest burst into flame and burn down to the ground. And all because of a simple chain reaction. I don't get you, what chain reaction? What do you mean, Nolik? Tom Thomas was rude to you, then you were rude to Simka, then Simka was rude with me. So there it is, a chain reaction. Yeah, and the rudeness was like a little spark. It just spread and spread and spread like a forest fire. Will you forgive me, Simka? Yeah, all right. I've got an idea. Why don't we try starting our very own chain reaction the other way around? What do you mean? Well, instead of spreading angry and rude feelings, we could spread happiness. But how? It's simple. All we need to do is smile and say nice things to each other. What a great idea! We could work together and fix Tom Thomas's mood! And I know how! Come help me pick up this domino, will you? Everything in the whole universe is made up of atoms. Particles so extremely small that you can't even see them through a microscope. But when a tiny atom splits, it makes a tiny explosion. And that explosion can start another explosion, and another explosion, and another. And now you've got a chain reaction. And that's how a lot of tiny explosions work together to make the gigantic explosion of an atomic bomb, the deadliest weapon known to man. But atomic energy can also be used for peaceful purposes. For example, nuclear power plants use this energy to produce electricity in hot water. And nuclear-powered icebreakers can break through the thick Arctic ice so ships can sail on their way. They're all done. Nolik, bring them in. Mm -hmm. And 
And now we're gonna teach Tom Thomas how a chain reaction can work to make you feel really good. He's coming! On your marks, now! What's going on? No, really? Tom Thomas, watch this! Totally awesome! I can't believe what I saw! How did you do that? It was just a real... A chain reaction! What? A chain, chain reaction. reaction! The drums! Now, let's turn it on! It's buzzing! You hear it? I would love to! But the only thing I can hear is Nolik's banging! Nolik, what are you doing? I'm rehearsing my solo. Nolik's the drummer in our rock band. Didn't you know that? Why don't you go and rehearse somewhere else if you wouldn't mind? Yeah, all right. I just can't work like this. Nolik, stop it, please. Oh, my head is just splitting. Professor Eugenius. Will you come to the laboratory? There's something very strange in there. What? I'm hearing some kind of awful sounds. You are? I think it's a ghost. Back from the dead. Don't you worry about ghosts, Lisa. I'll check what it is. Hmm. So it's you making the racket. What? I'm just rehearsing. Well, what is it? Uh, don't worry. It's just a piece of equipment rattling. You know what you should do? You should go and practice back at home, my young friend. It's not very hard to make a drum. One way to make it is to take an empty barrel and replace its bottom with a skin made of leather or plastic. If the skin is stretched tightly, the sound can get very bright and loud. Really big drums are usually played with percussion mallets or beaters, while smaller drums can be played with sticks or with bare hands. Instruments that make sounds by being shaken, scraped, or beaten are all called percussion instruments. There are lots of different percussion instruments, like the small hand drums that are called bongos, big shakers with handles called maracas, cymbals made out of metal. Now those really make a lot of noise. And there's tambourines, ratchets, and even spoons. That's right! People can make music using spoons as a percussion instrument. Tom Thomas, do you think I could practice my drumming here? Yeah. Go ahead. I've just got some homework to do. I can do that, and better than you can, too. And what if I play like this, huh? Then I'll go like that, or like that. Keep going, Nolik. This is fun. Maybe it's fun for you. 
the drum! Stop! That's enough! Oh, oh, oh. Bang, Bang the drum! And now, let's turn it off. Can you hear that? It stopped buzzing. It did. Hey, everybody, it's Nolik. Yo, what's up? So, our noisy ghost is back. I thought you were practicing at home now. Tom Thomas is drumming there. I had to run away. Well, our excursion is over. And now I would just be so happy to listen to your rock group. The catapult. soldiers could have shot it themselves. Now that was a good shot. It wasn't real long and not high either. And off target. It was pretty awful. It was good, but awful. I got it. So what do we do? We need to raise it up a little higher. Hey, fire, Nolik. Why in the world would you shoot at a fixie? Fixies? They're supposed to be in school right now. Actually, I'm on my way to school. How about you, Fire? Why aren't you in class? Because there it's totally boring. But here, look at what a cool shooter we found. Ha! <laughs> what did you call it? You've got no idea what this is. It's called a catapult, guys. A cat with gold eyes? <laughs> it isn't a cat with gold eyes. It's a catapult, guys. <laughs> Catapults are ancient propulsion machines. They were used to shoot stones, heavy arrows, or barrels with burning tar. The main part of the catapult is a special piece of rope. It is twisted very, very tightly like a spring. The rope is then wrapped around a big spoon. And then, if you pull the spoon back, put a stone in it, and let it go, the catapult fires a shot. Ooh, and the stone flies far, far away. Uh-huh. All right, so here we go. Ha! Ugh, came up short. What do you mean short? What are you aiming at? You'll see. The spoon needs to go further back. Just a little. Guys, you're gonna break the glass. <laughs> no, like, now push. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, right on target. Now let's fly out into space. Wait, what space? What kind of flying? Who's gonna fly? I'm gonna fly. Ha <laughs> ha! Right out the window. Right up to the moon. First fixin' onto the world, Nolik. Are you ready for your flight into space? Yes, sir. Nolik, get out of the spoon now. I'll be the first fixie on the moon. Yeah! Nolik, enough of this. What kind of joke is this? It's not a joke at all. He's gonna fly into space. And how come it's not you? Because he's lighter. Hold on. Humans didn't go straight into space themselves. They sent dogs out there first. Nah. Chusaka's not gonna fit in here. Simka, why don't you go and let us finish? Fine, I will go. But only after Nolik finds himself a helmet. Hmm, you're right about that. I'll go find a helmet. <laughs> the catapult was invented in ancient times. But people still use them today. Only now, instead of launching stones, catapults are used to launch jet airplanes. You see, the runway on an aircraft carrier is quite short, so catapults are used to help the planes move fast enough to take off. Catapults can also be used to save the life of a pilot. When an airplane has an accident, a catapult activates in the cabin. The pilot is shot into the sky and comes back to the ground with a parachute. A plain old slingshot is also a kind of catapult. It's just a very little one. But be careful with this toy. It can be dangerous to others and to you, too. As for us fixies, the only time that we use catapults is on a peaceful mission. Ha, 
Atlas, hurry! Our Nolik's getting shot to the moon with a catapult! What? And if I make new fixies up there, what should I say to them? Hi there. And you can ask them to launch you back. So? Let's do it! Fire! Launch it! Stop! Don't! Simka! Nolik! I'm not getting out! <laughs> Whew! We're alive! Hooray! He flew all the way! Who flew away? To the moon? Nope, just a bit short. It's not our fault. You're just heavier than Nolik, and that's why you came up short. Papus, maybe we can try one more time. What? Knots. <gasps> no, look, there are pirates off the starboard side. <gasps> Battery, fire. Hey, I'm not a pirate. Why'd you hit me? That's it. I'm tired of playing the wind. Where are my pirates? This looks great. Can I board your ship? And what are your skills? Tons, like protecting the ship and yelling hooray when we win. And how about good sea knots? Can you tie them? <laughs> of course I can tie them. Then tie up our treasure and make sure it's good and tight. Pirates, prepare to attack. I got it. <laughs> Whoa. Ah, <yikes. sighs> That's done. Good enough. It's good and tight. Now can you survive a storm? Without a doubt. Huh? Whoa! 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 Our treasure! It sunk into the sea. That was my that was my mom's necklace we sunk. I'll pick it all up, don't worry. No, thank you. We'll manage ourselves. He calls himself a sailor. Go and learn to tie some knots. <sighs> Try tying two ropes into a knot. You think it's easy? A badly tied knot will untie itself before you know it. Here's one way to tie it right. First, cross over the two ends like this. Now, to finish the knot, you've got to cross them over again. But not this way. It's got to be in the opposite direction. When it's done, it looks like one loop inside another. This kind of knot is called a square knot. And it won't untie as long as you tie it right. And that's just one of the many kinds of knots a sailor has to learn. I knew I could tie it. Now, what else is there to practice on around here? I found some more of our treasure. Here's another one. That's 19, but we're supposed to have 20. I know it because I counted our treasure. So what happened to the last one? Well done there. So what else could I tie? Perfect. I even remember what it looks like. It's a different color. It's a bright red one. Oh, Mom's gonna notice right away that the red one's gone. I gotta go find it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's on the floor. Who tied my laces together? I was just practicing, sorry. And what else did you tie up to practice your knots? Um, uh, not sure you wanna know. You're funny. Let's go and tie them. That way, I'm scared. She's just staring at her own whiskers, Nolik. And what have you done to her whiskers? Well, I tied them with the square knot. Fire, you're just a blockhead. And why don't you tell us what else you've done? Well, okay. I tied a decoration on her tail. That's where it is. We were looking everywhere for that thing. Fire, go and fix everything you've done. 
Chusaka, don't run away. Don't be scared. We just want to untie the knot. Sailors have developed all sorts of different knots. Without them, they couldn't control their sails. But we couldn't get by without knots on land, either. Mountain climbers use tightly knotted ropes to help them climb and keep them safe. Fishermen tie hooks to their fishing line using special knots. You can't even pitch a camping tent properly without making a knot. When people sew, they tie knots in the thread to hold it in place. And doctors use knots when they stitch and bandage a wound. And a tie wouldn't be a tie if you didn't tie a knot in it. Sneakers won't fall off your feet. And the laces won't drag on the ground if they're tied with a proper knot. But sometimes things can get knotted up by accident. And that's one time when you don't need to know how to tie knots, but how to untie them. All aboard! Like that? Now the only thing left to do is tie a knot. Should I tie it? Are you sure it won't untie? You're joking. Why don't you go ask Chusaka if I can tie a knot like a sailor? The laboratory. get to the school right away! What did he say? That we've got to get to the school. How come? Did you hear why? I didn't. Did you? I wonder if Simka didn't go to school today. Or if Nolik got into some kind of mischief. Oh, I'm worried this is something serious. La 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 la. And that's five, six, Hairstyle. Seven, eight. <gasps> Hi there. Hello, Verda. Oh, where's Grampus? I'm not positive, but go and look in the chemistry area over there. Over in chemistry? Uh, tell us, was Nolik doing anything wrong today? Nolik? He's always fooling around. Right. So we're not here for anything Nolik did. Maybe something awful happened to him. Like what? Well, how about anything? This isn't just a school for fixies. This is a laboratory. The laboratory where Professor Eugenius works is always humming. In the mechanical zone, Professor Eugenius tests all sorts of different devices to see how well they are made. In the chemistry zone, he conducts experiments on the quality and safety of food. In the electrical zone, he repairs electrical devices and checks their safety. Unfortunately, the professor can be absent-minded, and that can cause things in his laboratory to bubble, spark, or even explode! Masya, there's nothing to worry about yet. But how can I not worry? Digit, have you seen Nolik anywhere? Do you know if anything's happened to him? This is a laboratory here. Who knows what could happen to anyone? Like what? What are you saying? Like that. I told you, things happen here. And where? Let's go, uh... quickly! Marcia, no need to panic. Tula, oh. where is so good you're here? We really need your help. What is going on? Ah, oh, there! Oh, we! Grampus! What? Where? In the mechanical zone, there! And Simka and Nolik, there! Children. Don't lose your head. Oh! Oh! Masya is my wife and the mother of our children, Simka and Nolik. Masya is a real beauty, a kind and gentle soul, and a wonderful homemaker. She is also a very responsible and extremely skilled fixie. She is our family's expert in kitchen appliances and gadgets. Masya works from morning till night, fixing and cleaning anything that is in need of her expert care. Because she just loves when everything is clean and tidy. But most important for Masya are her children. She takes loving care of Simka and Nolik and tries to protect them from harm. Masya worries about them so much that sometimes her imagination gets carried away with what might have happened to them. Although our little Nolik 
can get himself into situations that even Masia could never have dreamed of. we need to save, not you. I don't need saving either. I'm fine. And what are you so worried about? Everyone's alive. Then why did you make us come here? I need you to help with a little accident we had. Nolik, was this your fault? Oh, no, it's not Nolik's fault. Quite the opposite. He was trying to help me fix it. Papus, we need you to help us with one of the pieces that we couldn't get back in place. This one? <gasps> Huh? Uh. Tideesh! Oh, a perfect repair. Huh, that was really the only reason we had to rush here? Why not? There was just no way we could let this wait, so I sent for you. But fire said... Why fire? Why is it always fire? How come you had to scare us so badly? I'm not the one who scared you. You did that all by yourselves. The refrigerator. Good job! My homework is all done! Ted, you're it! Just stay still. Oh, oh, you're really stuck. Simka, we're not gonna leave me, right? We aren't. But I'm afraid, Nolik, you'll be stuck for a while. Tom Thomas, help me! What's going on? Look, this blob of white stuff grabbed onto Nolik and it won't let go of him. Oh, it's a piece of gum. It's my bubble gum. Oh, thanks a lot, Tom Thomas. Now, what's the plan to get me unstuck from here? Here's what we do. It's got to be frozen. Once I sat on gum, too, and my mom put my pants in the freezer, the gum froze up and it came right off. I don't want to go into the freezer. Don't worry, Nolik. I'll stay right here with you. Just hold on. It won't take long at all. Huh. Why do I need to hold on? The gum's already holding on to me. Simka, do you know why it's so cold in the freezer when outside it's warm? I'll explain it to you. A refrigerator has a pump that pushes a special liquid through a long tube. Inside the refrigerator, the liquid in the tube wants to turn into a gas. To do that, it takes the heat from everything inside, and that makes the refrigerator cool. Then the pump sucks in the gas and pushes it out as a hot liquid into the tubes on the back of the refrigerator. That lets all of the heat collected from the inside escape into the air outside. Uh, I wish I was somewhere warm. Hold on. I'll go get us some warm clothes to wear. I don't want to hold on. I want to go with you. Just hang in there. I'm hanging. Tom Thomas, open up! Masia, do we have any warm clothing to wear? Why in the world do you need it? I just do. Well, I need to know what is happening. <laughs> Hooray! Tom Thomas! Freeze up in here for good. A 
Fixie is constantly surrounded by all sorts of danger. Inside a dark freezer, a Fixie can lose his way and freeze to death. If he's not paying attention, he can drown inside of a washing machine or inside of a dishwasher. And a careless Fixie is always at risk of getting an electric shock. Or suppose there's a short circuit inside of an appliance that starts a fire. If this happens, you need to run away if you want to survive. And what about humans? Well, they don't even believe that we Fixies exist at all, so they can accidentally drop something on top of a Fixie, or step on one, or kick us across the room. So if we don't get out of the way in time, ah! Oh! So what I'm saying, Fixies, you need to be careful out there and pay attention. So be smart and stay safe, fellow Fixies. I don't understand this at all. He was right here. Poor Nolik. I wonder where he went. Look at this! Footprints! Nolik! You're alive! You scared me half to death! How did you get out of there? Well, you told me about how a refrigerator works. And so I found that cold tube and started crawling on it until it got hot, and then I was here! Hey, there's smoke coming out of you. We need to cool you down right away. Huh? Where? <laughs> ah! I don't want to go into the refrigerator! Stop! I was joking! <laughs> Look how it froze. I could break my teeth on it. You aren't gonna chew it anymore. I'd never do that. Not after Nolik sat on it. Well, you didn't need to stick it where it doesn't belong. Hey, I apologize. I'll go and throw it away. Maybe you'll try the trash can? The lever. Wrong. That's so light, I could lift it up with my finger. Oh my! But do you think you could lift up your nightstand? Don't know. Never tried it. So then go on! Ha <laughs> 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 No way! And you are so much bigger than that nightstand. But watch, I can lift this big pencil! Just look how much smaller I am. So, who's stronger, you or me? Hmm, well, I guess it's not me. The Fixies may be very small, but they are actually much stronger than humans. Yes, it's true. <laughs> what, you don't believe me? Well, who's stronger, an elephant or an ant? You think it's the elephant. Well, of course, it's so much bigger. But did you know that one ant can lift up 50 ants its own size? And an elephant? It can't even hold up one. So it turns out that for its size, an ant is much stronger than an elephant. And the same goes for Fixies. Fixies are incredibly strong for their size. They can lift things that are a hundred times heavier than they are. And Fixies can jump 50 times higher than their own height. If humans were as strong as Fixies are, they'd be able to lift an automobile all by themselves. Yeah, Tom Thomas, it's time you built up your strength. Well, how? Start lifting dumbbells. Or if you want to, you can use my barbell. <laughs> no, thanks. I'll use the dumbbells my dad has. They're in his office, I think. Oh, there's one. And where's the other one? Aha, there you are. I'll get you out of there. Come on, come on. I'm helping you here. It's stuck. All right. Move aside. I'll get him right out. What is this, glued to the floor or something? <laughs> hey, what's all the racket? Hi there, Simka. We can't get the dumbbell out from under there. Well, of course you can't. The sofa's pressing down on it. So that's what it is. And I was worried that I lost all my strength. Well, that means we have to lift up this sofa. We can't do that. It's too heavy for us. We can do it. 
Tom Thomas, get me your hockey stick from your room. Mm-hmm. We can't move a sofa with a hockey stick. Don't worry, you'll see. <sighs> Here, I brought it. What is it for? We're gonna use it as a lever. A lever? Well, yeah. A lever works the same way that a seesaw does, with a board resting on top of a piece called the fulcrum. But with a lever, one side is longer than the other. And that's the secret to its power. With a lever's help, it's possible to lift any weight. All you need to do is get the short arm of the lever under the load and push down on the long arm. And the longer the arm, the more weight you can lift. And that's how a lever makes people stronger. Well, can we find a fulcrum in here? Maybe the dumbbell. Can that be our fulcrum? Great idea. Now you're thinking the right way. You ready to go? Let's go. Lean on it, Tom Thomas. <laughs> Yay! It's working. <sighs> Tideesh! I'm so strong. Did you see? Now watch how I lift Dad's heavy weights for you. Look, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like I told you. You'd be better off training with my weights. Didn't you just see me lift up the sofa? You didn't lift the sofa. The lever did. Did you ever hear the saying, knowledge is power? I've heard it. Although, some physical power won't hurt you either. So pick up your lever and go out and play some hockey. You know how built those hockey players are. The electric train. Woo 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 woo! Zoom! Zoom! And suddenly, the Earth is attacked by an alien spaceship. If help arrives here on time, we'll be saved. Move faster, faster. Come on, get off the train. Move it, move it. Tom Thomas, we came here to play. Oh, finally you're here. I need some aliens for this game. What kind of aliens are you talking about? Just plain old aliens. You know the ones. They come destroy the Earth and just about everything. We don't want to destroy anything at all. Why can't we be uh, the train engineers, huh? Train engineers? <laughs> you don't know anything about driving a train. Oh, we know plenty about trains. Humans invented the railroad long ago. But back then, the rails were made out of wood. People didn't start making metal rails until the end of the 18th century. But the first railroad cars had no engines to give them their power. Instead, they used horses to pull them along. Later, horses were replaced by the steam engine. Wood and coal would burn in their furnaces to boil the water in the boilers, making the steam that turned their wheels. And the fixies were there to help those trains go, making sure all of the parts could work together smoothly. But now steam engines have long gone away. The railroad uses electricity now for its power. These electric trains race along the railway at almost the speed of an airplane. So you might know trains, but you'll still be the aliens. This railroad is mine. So you're gonna play the way I want. The train is unloaded and leaving the station. You can play choo-choo by yourself. And I will. Hmm. Hey, why did you stop? This doesn't help either. It's not going at all. Simka! No lick! Where are you? Did I hurt your feelings or something? Mom, is Dad gonna be home soon? No, is something the matter? We've been attacked by evil aliens. The train has to be fixed right away, or we'll never escape them. Uh, mm-hmm. You want some tea? 
Ah, I've got to think of something. Simka, Nolik, I know you're in there. Please forgive me if I hurt your feelings. I'm really sorry. There's nobody but you that can save the world from the evil aliens. All right, it talked us back into it. Well, let's go and check the rails. Nolik, follow me. I'm faster. Whoa! Well, so much for being faster. But it looks like I found the break. Tom Thomas, the rails are broken. I know, and so? You know, but that's why your train's not running. Just like a real train, model trains run on electricity. But there aren't any batteries inside the locomotive to pull the other cars. The engine gets its electricity from the rails. Each piece of the rail has a wire in it. If the rails come apart, the electricity can't flow through the track and get to the train. And without electricity, the train's engine just stops going. So reconnect the rails and your train will run again. Uh-huh. Put them together. Ah. Yes. Hooray! The train's running. Way to go. So will you play with me now? And which way are we playing this time? Whatever you want, I'm with you. The train rushes down the track with Nola as its engineer, when suddenly from out of the sky comes an alien spaceship. Greetings to you, O people of planet Earth. I come from far away, from another galaxy. Have you come to destroy everything? No, I've come to fix it all. Oh! 